Hi Chosen Few Expats, welcome back. And for those of you who are new to our channel, thank you for joining us. Today we're adding a new segment to our channel called the Chosen Few Expat Show. It's a segment that we're generating for you to be able to interview expats who are currently living in Panama so we can get frontline experience of what it's like for them living in Panama. Some of these expats also own businesses that are gonna help us as new and future expats to get adjusted. We'll also be interviewing some native Panamanians who are bankers and realtors and working in other industries in Panama that are also going to help us um, to be able to get acclimated. And so with that, here's the premiere episode of the Chosen Few Expat Show. Y'all enjoy. Welcome to the Chosen Few Expat Show. I'm Alonzo. Today we have with us a very special guest, an expat who's been living in Panama for nearly two years, Joyce Barr, who is going to tell us about some of her experiences as an expat in Panama. And so with that, we want to welcome Joyce to the show. Welcome, Joyce. You're the Hello, first guest on the show. Hi. Hello. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Thanks so much for Excited. joining us. Very, very much appreciate it. Appreciate Thank your you. time uh, this morning. Mm -hmm, um, of so <clears throat> if you can, please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and then what made you decide to leave the United States to become an expat in Panama? Wow, well, yes, that's, um, you know, the big elephant in the room, isn't it? My background, um, I started out as um, a legal assistant way back in the day out of college. Um, but before I became an expat, I was a housing developer in Southwest Georgia for 20 years. I developed, owned, and managed over 200 apartments, Whoa. affordable housing under the tax credit program. And so after 20 years, 20 plus years of that, I kind of looked around and was going like, okay, what else? You know, I think this is coming to an end. And I've also was starting to feel a little, you know, disenchanted with the political situation. So the seeds yeah. were growing. That's going on as, right now. Yes, the seeds were growing as far as, you know, at expat for me. And I had always wanted to live in another country ever since I was a little girl. So when I came to visit Panama in 2014, um, I had in mind a venture to build some of the housing that I had been building in the U.S. I wanted to build it here in Panama. They call it social housing. Mm -hmm. um, and I came and stayed for about seven weeks and tried to develop contacts. Um, and then I knew that I would return. I wasn't as successful in, in working out a plan for the housing, but I just fell in love with Panama. So okay. that's how I got here. So did Panama just so happen to be the first place you, you know, you land, did you explore uh, any other places or consider any other places or you just came to Panama, you loved it and it was like, okay, this is it. Because that's kind of pretty much what happened with us. Yeah, well, good question. I was, you know, researching. I was also interested in Belize. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to kind of start somewhere with easy, right? You know, like expat one-on-one. So, so I was told Belize was that, you know. But um, after I researched Panama, I saw Alonzo, that it had the best retirement program, best visa program. And so I was fitting that mold. And yeah. I came in, yeah. I came in under their pensionado program with the excellent discount. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I really love. And that's why I chose Panama. And of course, I like the sunshine. I love the breezes here. Right. Yeah. So sunshine discounts and breezes. Okay, that all sounds great. So once you decided to make the move to Panama, okay, you came down, you did your exploratory work mm -hmm. in trying to um, <clears throat> research to set up your business. And I'm sure you were looking for housing during that time too. So um, what is it that made you decide on Vacamonte and the Playa Dorada uh, development? Um, but before you answer that, uh, everyone, you may remember in our first video, Why Expat to Panama, we covered the housing and this is one of the developments that we uh, covered. We, we showed a couple of listings from the area and that Joyce uh, lives in. So yeah, with yeah. that, why Playa Dorado? Playa Dorado is really nice. It's um, kind of a well-kept secret, actually. I love being near water. And so I was very yeah. fortunate to, to be able to rent a two bedroom, two bath condo. I mean, really affordable, right here on the beach. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I moved in in March, a few weeks before quarantine set in, and um, I pretty much had the whole beach, the gorgeous view all to myself. 
Prior to moving here, I was in the city and my roommate had told me about the listing. So with the help of a local, I was able to manage the process very well. Um, prior to moving um, back to Panama City, I just want to tell you, I lived in Bocas for six months on the beach. And that oh, was okay, I didn't know that. That's a, yeah, so, so I just love being in the water. water, yeah. <laughs> Yes, we do. Too. And Clare Dorado is a very nice, affordable community for um, for those wanting a beach side. Not too far from the city. We're only 30 minutes outside Panama City. Right. And I can't remember if I mentioned this to you, but I've been there myself on my first mm -hmm. trip to Panama. Um, I looked at some, um, at some houses in there also. I thought it was very nice. Um, but on that trip, I, that's as far as I made it. I didn't really, I think I made it out to uh, Chirera area to look at some mm -hmm. more houses, but I didn't make it out as far as Coronado and Nueva Gorgona. So it wasn't right. until later for us that uh, we saw that area and decided to move out to that area. But it, Playa Dorada is super nice um, with the development and the uh, playground and everything for the kids, a nice big pool next to the beach, beautiful palm trees. It looks right. great. Right. So, so, so you know where the pool area is. Mm -hmm. My apartment is right next to the pool area, so I get to see the families as they come and enjoy the beach area, pool area, um, and it's it's like I said, it's just a well kept secret. They keep they keep the beach clean, they keep the yeah. development clean, it's wide open. So I would certainly uh, would like to suggest for those families who who are just looking for something quick to come in, check out Playa Dorado. It, it might have what you you know what you're looking for. And, it's and, and I'm not shilling for the for the management. I, I haven't even talked to them about it. So. Right. Yeah, the prices there are very reasonable. And very uh, reasonable. One other important thing to note for everyone is that it is a um, that is uh, gated. There's a security gate. Yes. That you have to go through just to get into that whole area. So that's another yes. important thing. Two gates. Two gates. Okay. I know. Yes. The, the main gate and then the gate into yeah. your area. Oh, I just remember getting hemmed yeah. up that first time. I don't. I don't remember getting hemmed up the second time. <laughs> Um, so what are the top three things that you like about living in Panama? So you had your list of things when you were investigating, you probably had some thoughts in your head about what Panama would be like. You saw some things on your exploratory trip. So now that you've actually been there for some time, what are three of the things that you really like about living in Panama? And then also what are three of what you would say the negatives or, um, some things that maybe didn't quite meet your expectations as you expected? Okay, they're good questions. The, the top three things um, I might have mentioned was sunshine, discounts, and breezes. Uh, you know, I'm not hard to please, you know, after, uh, like I used to say, slinging it in the States, I was just really looking for a place to come and relax, no pressure, uh, and, and that's pretty much really what Panama is all about. Um, you don't get the opportunity to have the discounts at restaurants as much as you used to before COVID, but things are starting to open up again. So um, the great restaurants where you're able to get your hubalado discounts, you guys are going to get tired of me talking about that, but it is a great selling feature for retirees. Uh, it would really help you to stretch your retirement savings to look at Panama uh, in terms of a sustainable and affordable lifestyle that you have grown accustomed to eating yeah. out, okay? Um, and so after the lockdown, and it was a strict lockdown for us, nearly six months of, of six hours a week for the yeah. men, and nine right. hours for the women. <laughs> okay, so, so, but apart from that, Panama has great waterfalls, sunsets, sunrises, and I also love their appreciation for fireworks. Panamanians. Oh love yeah, they fireworks. love the party. We yeah. found that out also. We were there um, toward the end of the year last year, between say a little bit before Christmas and mm -hmm. through the New Year. And so you know, it's like Christmas Eve and it's fireworks and stuff. Pop 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 pop. You know, oh, over Christmas the water Day. and over the beach. And you know, yeah. my wife was just uh, yeah. you know she was just mesmerized by it. And yeah, so Panamanians do love a good party, though. That's mm -hmm. for sure. But we just weren't used to seeing that around those. No, not around Christmas, New Year's, okay, but they start like a week early. So oh, just any cause for celebration, you'll see a firework. Because like I would often go, okay, well, what holiday is this? And then no, it's just you know, fireworks sometimes. 
Yeah, so you can't get too jumpy, you know. Uh, no, but it's too and it's, it's but always it's pleasant. It's always pleasant. Somewhere off in the horizon, you'll see a fireworks. So mm -hmm. yeah, fireworks display. Okay, so other things I like about Panama, I know you said three things, but I'm going to throw these in as well. The affordable transportation option. Oh, yeah. You can get around the country, you can get around the city, much cheaper than you would ever imagine, honestly. Um, and, uh, yeah. But so on the transportation, I'm glad mm -hmm. you mentioned that because we also covered that, I believe, in maybe why expat the Panama Part 2 video. We talked about that. So the buses are like 25 cents unless you go into the airport. It's like $1.25. Mm -hmm. New subway is like 35 cents. And you can catch a bus from uh, Panama City all the way to the Costa Rican border for like $8. $8. Like that is just crazy. So, and cheaper um, with the discount. Yeah, and cheaper with the discount from the Pensionado Visa. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> so um, mm. one thing um, that, we, that I can't get out of here without asking you is an important question anytime, but especially with everything that's going on now in the U.S., is how are expats in general treated in Panama, more specifically, how are Black expats treated, and what is the social and racial climate like there? Wow, yeah, um, Panama is just different. Um, you'll find a whole spectrum of melanin here in Panama when it concerns Black Panamanians. I personally do not detect any type of animus or negative vibe in terms of a social interaction. Sometimes there's a little disregard, but, but basically Panamanians respect the Americans who are here. They've been here for a while. They've got this, this uh, this history, you know, both positive and negative about Americans, but for the most part, we're very well regarded and treated very respectfully. I find them to be a very warm and welcoming people. That's what I found as well. Yes. Yeah, we um, and in, in that regard, I didn't hit the three things that I'd like least about Panama, and, and, and I'm hesitant because you don't want to be critical about your host country. You're a guest here, but... Yeah, we um, do have to tell the people, you know, we have to tell it right. like it is. I mean, right, it's, it's, it's a fair point. The positives are still going to far outweigh the negatives. Absolutely. Anything I've seen, so... Absolutely. And it definitely outweighs the negatives of the United States of America. So Ten times. Just to fire away. Okay. Ten times. Okay, so so it's, number one is the one thing you most hear about is the lack of customer service. So mm -hmm. don't don't come here thinking you're gonna be able to return something you don't like. Because once you buy it, you own it. You, there's no return. You don't even have to break it. Huh? It's yours <laughs> anyway. Whether you better make sure you want it before you buy it. That's for sure. Um, and and our notion of liability doesn't exist here as well. I think. Mm -hmm. you know, so you want to take good care. And, and to be cautious and bear all responsibility on your part. Don't expect a bailout from anywhere, especially the government. Right. Okay? And um, keep Panama beautiful. If that was a motto that was well received and took to heart, this already lush and beautiful country would be just so much more 10 times. Mm -hmm. um, trash littering and burning is not as bad as it used to be, but there's still a lot of places where you'll find it. Mm -hmm. So those are the least three things I like about the country overall. But the people, now nah, I find them to be um, just a uh, warm opening. It's a big melting pot here. Diversity of cultures, diversity of people. And so, uh, yeah, the only thing you want to get fluent in the language. Get fluent in yes, Spanish yeah. as much as possible. Working knowledge. That I'm still working on. Right. As are we. But, you know, you can you can still make it. You know, these days you have Google Translate and things like that. So mm -hmm. if you want to get basic things done, you know, you can make it. But if you really want to experience the true culture, you do have to learn as much of the language as you, as you can. So yeah, it's, it's just that. a more rewarding experience. You, you, will, you definitely feel better about it. Yes. Thank, thank you for, um, for bringing that out. So um, I mentioned um, in the in intro of this video, that we're going to be interviewing expats, and then we're also going to be interviewing locals who have businesses, and then some of these expats also have been businesses. So fortunately for us, Joyce is one of those expats who also has a business. She is starting a blast relocation tour. Um, so Joyce, if you would please tell us about that. Tell us about Blast. And when, along and when, can customers, when can some of your future customers start booking that tour? Sure. Um, Blast is, is my 
next and hopefully last venture. I'm a serial entrepreneur. And so having gone from one venture to another, I, I saw this need of, of um, I like to call it a look-see tour because all of the other tours that are out there, sure, they, they're going to specialize in getting you to, to relocate to Panama. I know us, we want to come check things out first. And so I, I'm going to be offering small group tours that will allow you to you know, just look Panama over primarily a lot of beach locations, but um, well, we're going to have a good time in an intimate setting. And I've expanded the B. It originally was for boomers because you know I'm a boomer and, I, and that pension out of program brought me. So I'm saying, well, you can bring other boomers like me, single right. females and, you know, let's come to Panama and have a, an affordable, sustainable lifestyle, one that we're used to. So, right. But now I've expanded it, Alonzo. It's going to welcome everyone in these times. You know, the, the way the U.S. is so stressed out, how can you thrive and grow? So let's, let's consider other options. Let's, let's um, consider a black sit, an exodus, if, <laughs> right. if you will. Let's blast off. So it's, blast it's on up out of here. And I, I know I can't wait. That's it. That's it. So it's boomers, uh, blacks, and best buds. Let's mm -hmm. let's take this tour. Um, I'm in the process now of finishing up the website where I'll be able to start accepting bookings. Uh, I do apologize. I um, kind of you know just started this so quickly once I saw the demand and um, you know trying to get all the logistics down. So just bear patience, and I'll have more okay. info up soon. Okay, so yeah, so maybe, you know, since the website's not ready, I mean, we're working on ours also, so okay, I completely understand that. So you may not want to uh, tell everyone the URL right now, but um, maybe I can put a link below or give them the information as far as finding your Facebook page, because I know you have a Facebook um, page, I believe, mm -hmm. with, where you're describing it um, in more detail. So mm -hmm. I can link that um, in, the, in the description down below. Um, if you're interested, you can click on that and go on Facebook to get more information on Blast. So thank you Great. for that. Great. Thank um, you. I mean, I, I accidentally had it live for a couple of days. And do you know I had some, some people trying to tip bookings? Uh -oh. So I said, okay, I, I'm on to something now. So, so yes, I'm, I'm very motivated to be able to um, be live and to respond to everybody's questions and interests. So just stay tuned. Okay, we'll, we'll do, we'll be looking for that. Um, so what advice can you give to people who are considering Panama as their expat destination? So we got a lot of people here, people tuning into our channel. As you just mentioned, there's a lot of people that's now looking to try to leave the US. Mm -hmm. They're looking at um, a lot of different countries. I'm in a lot of these different Facebook um, groups from like Mexico, Ecuador, Panama, Costa Rica, mm -hmm. and people are just, you know, more people are learning about Panama, but what advice can you give someone who is considering um, Panama as their destination? Well, um, of course, the most obvious advice I could, would say is just come take a look-see. You know, mm -hmm. Boots on the ground, figure out, you know, what's your preference in terms of habitat, because there's just a variety of places to choose from, beachside, mountainside, in the city. Um, overall, as an as a expat destination, you can't go wrong, the proximity to the U.S. So, so if you have to have uh, an, an emergency flight back, you know, that wouldn't be problematic. You could generally land anywhere within four to eight hours back in the U.S. Um, the dollar is yes. widely accepted here. So there's yes. no conversion currency issues you have to concern yourself with. Learning the language is, is enough, right? That's the biggest thing, right? Okay, like, that's the biggest that, thing. Yeah, yes. that's the biggest thing. So I would just say, you know, especially if you are retirement age, Panama should be, you know, certainly one of your top three choices just because of the previous benefits I mentioned. Ease right. of residency and discount. And really, even if you're not retirement age and you can't right. get the Pensionado visa, the Friendly Nations visa that yes. you're applying for, that's still considered one of the top two easiest uh, permanent yes. residency visas in the world to get. So the process is very simple in Panama. It's straightforward. Looking for retirees and all of us. It's just that you retirees get all the benefits, all of the discounts and everything else. 
you know. Well, you know, they lack a, self, a safety net program. You would think they would have a, a countrywide safety net program, but this is their version of that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, you know, I can't believe you're, you know, you're a retiree right now. I mean, you come talking about you got the pensionados, like you look great. You can't be retired. It's impossible, you know. Thank you. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and, and the sun, I mean, you just love the sun. It, it just does wonders for you. Teach you really That's does. for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. My wife loves it a little too much. She had me in the sun sweating like a honey baked ham. Girl, <laughs> you trying to get under her umbrella. I want to be out in the weather in the sun, but not directly Ooh. in the sun, roasting for Ooh. hours. You know? Oh, the tropical sun is just, I love it. I do. Well, Joyce, we want to thank you for joining us uh, today on the Chosen Few Expat Show. Thanks very much for being our first guest. You are great, and um, we'll be in touch. Definitely looking, looking forward to um, meeting you and um, helping more of our people to, to make the exodus from the U.S. Same here, Alonzo. I really did appreciate it. And I'm going to look forward to being your neighbor because Nueva Gorgonia is next on my list. Oh, yeah. Come on okay. down. It's nice. Yeah. Yes, it's nice. All right. All right. And looking Thank forward to seeing your videos and, and continuing the good work as we try to, you know, support those who want to, you know, consider options for their pursuit of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And less stress, that's for sure. Less just feel stress. the weight lifted up off of you when you're in a place like Panama versus the US. It's, it's just something that, you know, just can't really be explained. So, thank but thanks you. again for joining us. Okay, well, thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.